Uh, should I read the whole thing out? Yeah, probably best. It's actually quite a short article, which makes a change for me. It's not pages and pages. It's probably about a thousand words, fifteen hundred words, which to me is normally about how many words I use to ask Emma if she wants a cup of tea. <laughs> Okay. Introduction. For those atheists that discuss and debate religion, we should ask ourselves what the purpose behind it is. What do we do the things we do? Uh, why do we do the things we do? For the Christian evangelist or the Muslim performing dawah, this is a simple question to answer. They do it because they are attempting to spread their religion. They believe their way is the way, and their religion teaches them that they should be spreading their religion. What of the atheists, though? We have no such doctrine, and we have no uh, we have no doctrine at all. Yet it is common, especially in this modern era, to find atheists discussing and debating religion. So we should ask ourselves why we attempt to discuss religion with the believer. Is the purpose simply to mock those that do not think like us, like us, or is the purpose something more? Is the purpose to change minds? And I think when it comes to it, you hear a lot of them say, well, I want to convince them to not believe. I, I think believing is stupid. We need to change this. So I think for a lot of them, the purpose is to actually change people's minds, regardless yeah. of what they say. Yeah, no, I no, definitely. I think many actually do have these discussions, as you say, with the, the purpose to change minds. Um or at least on a larger scale, they're saying they don't want religion in their society. They don't want re religion influencing their society. Um, to get religion not influencing their society, what do they need to do? Well, they need change. to change the minds of the people and all of that sort of thing. So uh, don't get me wrong, though. There are a couple of people recently who did admit to me openly on Twitter that they're either there to ridicule theists not to actually change minds they're just making fun of them or uh just to let off steam um by ridiculing theists uh so i mean those sorts of people i i, I do wonder but even with one of them they still said that they felt very harmed by religion and they don't want it in their society anymore so i found that strange that they didn't want to actually take a a proactive sort of thing to to change people's minds and try and do it they were so determined that you can't change people's minds on places like twitter that they were just going to make fun of people but it, then it's just going to reinforce a stereotype and fair enough you're not trying to change your mind right now but you do want their mind changed but what you're doing is going to get them defensive and the next time someone tries to approach them and change their mind they might just reject what they say completely yeah they'll just go straight into fight mode Exactly. Philip, yes, you do know exactly who I'm talking about. I try not to name names on the stream, though, um, but feel free to do it <laughs> if you want. <laughs> okay. Um, so, it is common to find atheists in debate groups, especially amongst those that act like echo chambers for atheist thought, using the phrase, Ridicul ridiculous beliefs deserve ridicule. There are many who seem to be content to insult and mock the believer because they hold the idea that the theist has ridiculous beliefs. This is similar to what you were saying. Um, what of the theist, though? There are many who hold the idea that the atheist has ridiculous beliefs. We often see attempts from various theists to mock the non-believer, not just the atheist, but those that hold a different religion. So does their belief that others hold ridiculous beliefs entitle them to ridicule those beliefs, as the statement implies? The atheists who hold to this idea justify their actions by claims of atheism being logical, reasonable, and rational. Yet the believer holds that their belief are these things too. Each group believes that they are the ones with the correct beliefs, the rational beliefs, the logical beliefs. What does ridicule achieve, though? Ridiculing can be used to bully people into conformity, of course. Is that all we as atheists want, though? For those that do not believe to simply conform to our ideas, 
How does that make us any different from those believers who simply want us to conform to their ideas? If our goal is to attempt to promote rationality and reason and logic, then surely we want more than simple conformity. Surely we should want more than simply to look good or look clever amongst our peers and those that are in our in-group. And that seems to be what a lot of the stuff that goes on, it's how it appears to me. It's it's just people appealing to the in-group. Oh, look at how clever I am. Look at how cool I am that I can put all these people down. Ha, laugh at the stupid people. Yeah, I uh, definitely agree with you there. There is a lot that you see online with that that sort of getting the pat on the back. It's an ego boost, isn't it? It's, uh, <laughs> look at me. <laughs> look at how smart I am. Look, I can make fun of the believers. Yeah. Yeah, it, it and it, it doesn't really do very much. I mean, even ridiculing someone into conformity might make them conform, but not actually change their belief. And when they're not around you, they are not going to conform. And they'll find out other people who think like them and are only putting on the pretense of conforming, gather together, gather strength, and then storm the capital. Yeah. <laughs> Relevant. Basically. Yeah. I try to be occasionally. Um, okay. Unless those are our goals, then of course we should want more. In order to achieve more, though, we must understand what it takes to change a person's mind. We also must understand why it is people believe in religion. Beyond memes such as too stupid to understand science? We need to understand why people believe their God exists and their religion beyond the simple answer of indoctrination. One of my colleagues here that I spelt wrong has been there for years with that mistake. How <laughs> could I? Um, one of my colleagues here at Answers and Reason presented an article into the science of belief, which you can read here at your own leisure. That was Alan's, wasn't Your, it? I think so, yeah. Um, in fact, I think it came up somewhere as well recently. Oh, really? Yeah, and I can't remember where. <laughs> it's not important. <laughs> um, no, no, but it was interesting to see it outside of our context. And um, like, I think it was, I saw it on a YouTube video or something. Oh, really? It being cited, yeah, and I can't remember where now. Um. We already face an uphill battle when it comes to the believer changing their mind, especially in cases of religions like Islam, in which it is taught that it is perfect and beyond reproach and that it cannot be wrong. If our goal is to change their minds, then we must understand at least the bare minimum of what it takes to change a mind, and the approach is necessary in order to change a mind. In this article, we will attempt to discuss some of the various approaches and ideas put forward about changing someone's mind. So what does it take to change a person's mind? Does it, Dave? Can't leave us hanging on that. That's just like a cliffhanger. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I've got to go now. Bye. <laughs> just to add some, you know, excitement and tension. <laughs> I should have got the samples and ready and then. <laughs> the ticking noise. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> and then everybody just go make a cup of tea. <laughs> um, okay. So when it comes to changing a person's mind, there's obviously a lot more that goes into it than just simple respect. Um, the person has to feel that you know what you're talking about. You have to know what you're you're talking about at least to a, a certain degree mm -hmm. um, but as i'll go on to explain here if the person who is talking to you doesn't at least have the bare minimum of respect for you they won't even begin to listen to you so respect is sort of the the starting point yeah yeah, no, you're right. It's definitely the starting point. I think it's it's that building a rapport is one of the most important things. 
if we go back just for a second, I hope I don't actually say something you're going to say in the rest of the article. It's been a, a few years since I've read it myself. Um, yeah. But if you've got a good rapport with someone and you respect someone, then ridicule can actually be effective in that circumstance. Because yeah. if you were to say to me, Joe, you're being a fucking idiot, I'd go, shit, I know Dave knows what he's going on about. He knows about this particular topic. He's a friend. I respect him. We have lots of good conversations. So maybe I should listen to him. But the same, per if some random on the internet over the same topic turned around to me and went, you're a fucking idiot, I'd probably just brush him off as someone, you know, being willfully ignorant about the topic I'm discussing and not knowing what they're talking about. If it's something I'm already a little bit unsure about, I might turn around and try and find a couple of peers and go, am I right in my thinking or should I change what I'm doing? But in general, when I'm confident in a position, ridicule will not work. And you have to think about the average theist is very confident in their belief in God. A lot of them claim to not only believe, but know that their God exists. So it's going to take a hell of a lot for you to be able to convince them of something else. Yeah. And especially if you think of something like, say, Islam, where it's taught that everything is perfect, nothing can be changed because it's been like that since time immemorial. They're the ones with the right idea. Every other religion is wrong, not just wrong, but there's a certain level of purity that comes in Islam that isn't quite there in other religions. and. They're also taught that those outside of Islam want them to not believe. They, they'll ridicule them and persecute them, and they should take it and stand strong in the name of Allah. That You know, that kind of stuff. So really, all, all you're doing when you're mocking somebody like that is reinforcing the idea that they're right. Unless, of course, you have the rapport with them. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the first step towards the acquisition of knowledge, of course, is an interest in the topic at hand. If we are not interested in the topic, then we will rarely seek out the knowledge. Sometimes it is curiosity, other times it is necessity, but it is usually some kind of interest that begins our journey. The reason behind our interest is often a factor in what information we seek out or what information we accept as well. If we are simply interested in debunking an idea, often we will seek out that particular information. The same is true of the opposite as well. We will seek the information that supports the idea that we were interested in. However, interest is only the beginning of the journey. It is what leads us to begin our acquisition of information and knowledge, and not the deciding factor on where and who we get our information from. And it, it, it sort of rings true that if you're not interested in something, chances are you're not going to go and look it up. Um, and even in the case of like debunking a religious claim, like debunking the Kalam, people will generally just give it the most cursory glance. They won't look at the arguments for it. They'll look at the arguments from popular YouTubers mm -hmm. and go to their videos and listen to them. And it, because they're only interested in the debunking part. Yeah, no, that, that's fair enough. It's it's actually um, like that came at one of the questions from um, Trinity Radio's 10 questions for atheists. And they actually said, um, you know, we, what what authors have you actually read um, like, like from Christian theology? And even then I said, it's been probably 20 years since I've actually read a book on religion and it wasn't even looking into christian religion then myself i know you have for your your coursework doing uh your philosophy degrees um because philosophy of religion has been part of it so it's made sense for you too but obviously i spent a lot of time originally looking into things and i've become quite apathetic towards the whole sort of theistic debate myself so one, I try not to actually get into it um, uh, that much anymore. And, and, and two, I don't care enough to spend 40, 50 quid on a book about something that 
is supporting a religion which I can poke so many ho- holes in already. Um, so, so why would I get into that? Don't get me wrong. If a theist was to present me a new argument that I hadn't heard and I found it very interesting, I'd engage it. I'd do my best to research it. Um, I wouldn't just go and look for the debunk of their argument. I'd try and think about it myself and and look for things that support and go against it. But I'm not going to go out there anymore and spend that much money on a book from someone supporting a religion that clearly has many holes in it and you just need apologetics to support it. Yeah, makes sense. Um, like you said, I, I've looked into this stuff um, because of my degrees and whatnot. Outside of that, there are philosophy or religion books that I've read, but uh, they're not specifically Christian or anything like that. Yeah, and I do find the philosophy of religion as a general topic quite interesting. Um, it's when you get more into theology, looking at a specific religion and arguing for a particular deity. But, it, you know, with all the claims about a particular deity, like we justified on Tuesday, why we don't believe in gods in general, there's all of those arguments there. And I can't imagine that there is a decent argument against a lot of them. Because if they did, when I presented that particular argument, a theist would come up and give me (laughs) <laughs> that argument against yep. it and they don't <laughs> yeah and the, the next bit sort of leads on to this a little bit it is often respected as a major contributing factor in who we listen to for if we do not respect the person or at the very least their grasp of the topic they are speaking on then we will reject the information that they present us we can often not respect the person giving us the information But if we respect their authority on the subject, then we will still listen to what that person has to say on the subject, even if we dismiss their opinions on other subjects. So taking this as an example, if you were going to have a discussion about, say, the evil God argument, you're more likely to go and look at somebody like Stephen Law then you are somebody like, um, I don't know, William Lane Craig. I know he doesn't really do much with that, but, you know, let's just take that as an example. You're going to go with the names that you know and the people who sort of espouse similar views and whose views you respect. Mm -hmm. Taking it to another extreme, consider the definition of atheism. Now, for people like us, And people like who are watching us at the moment and, you know, Lord Bryant and Philip and Josh and Leon and everyone else, they're more likely to go to somebody like Graham Oppie or Paul Draper, you know, somebody like that to get their information on what atheism means and how it's used. And they're more likely to reject somebody like Aaron Ra or Godless Engineer. Mm hmm. And for good reason, you know, yeah, just to throw that out. For a good reason. <laughs> but the people who watch Aaron Ra, Matt Dillahunty, Godless Engineer, like that, <laughs> Randolph, yeah, <laughs> they're going to reject people like Oppie, Law, Draper, because they don't have any respect for them. As far as they're concerned, they're wrong because they're not saying the same things as Aaron Ra and Randolph and everybody else. So respect for the person starts out as a contributing factor to whether or not you'll actually even begin to look at the information they're presenting. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And I, I think the thing is, I, I with someone like Aaron Ra, when I had only heard his scientific arguments and his arguments against creationism, I had a lot of respect for him. And, uh, you know, I, I, I wasn't aware of them where, where people like Alan and Chris, uh, other authors of Air, were, and then they actually went to see him. But when I listened to some of his opinions on science and how he changed his mind about different topics and things like that, I was like, oh, wow, no, this guy, this guy is someone to look up to. And then I got into his epistemology <laughs> 
and it was oh. <laughs> and he I, I lost all respect for him because of the way he acted and the way he debated when I started watching debates and how angry and aggressive he was um and and now I suppose I have a bias against him whereas I might have had a slight bias towards him before only reading his science stuff that's it. And even though you've lost all respect for him in that kind of sense, you'll still listen to what he says on on you know questions of science and things like that, because you have respect for his authority in that subject. You might not respect him in any other subject, but you know that he knows what he's talking about when it comes to certain subjects, and you will still... Even though you have no respect for him, you will still grant him the audience because oh, you respect his knowledge. Yeah. 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 No, definitely. Like, yeah. So, so again, it shows respect counts for a lot when it comes to actually changing somebody's mind. Because whether it's respect for your knowledge or respect for you as a person, without either of that, nobody is actually going to listen to you. Mm -hmm. And so, as I go on to say, showing us that respect has much to do with our ability to change another's minds, another's mind. Here is where the atheist faces something of a problem, though. The knowledge we have is not something that most believers have a genuine interest in. Most are not seeking to acquire knowledge of atheism, but instead to convince the atheist that the position they hold is incorrect. They are seeking to convert rather than be converted. They also do not have a respect for the average atheist authority on, some sub on certain subjects. The authority that they respect as far as knowledge goes is their God and their scriptures. And, you know, like other apologists and things like that. I was trying to keep the word count down, but... <laughs> you know me, once I get going, I just write pages and pages. <laughs> yeah. And... <laughs> This is made even more difficult in cases such as Islam, in which it convinces the believer that the scripture cannot be wrong, and that the Muslim cannot be wrong if they are indeed following what is taught in the Quran. It creates an almighty, pun intended, <laughs> bias in their thinking, one that is incredibly difficult to challenge. Mm, definitely. And if you've, yeah, if you've ever had any discussions with, say, Muslims from places like Pakistan, there is a certain arrogance there that's a hard hurdle to get over. It's not an impossible challenge, though. What it means, uh, what it means, another mistake, damn it, is that we must rely, what it means that we must rely on is their respect for us as people and as human beings. We could argue that it will never happen. This is true. After all, it is included in some, some scriptures that we are not to be respected, that we are only worthy of hellfire, that we are fools, and that the wise are the ones that follow the true religion, which usually tends to be the one that the particular believer is a member of. I know I'm being a bit hyper hyperbolic here, um, but it's more just to stress a certain point to those reading it and those with the idea that, you know, ridicule is all that's necessary. We should ridicule, ridicule. Um, however, this is not always the case. There are many that are willing to engage in dialogue and discussion. There are many that treat those who believe differently with respect. So long as they are worthy of respect, of course. They generally tend not to engage in discussion with those whose behavior is bullying and insulting. They are indeed looking for reasonable discourse, just as many atheists are simply looking for reasonable discourse. I think that's backed up by a lot of the conversations that we've had online of late, especially with theists. Um, I tend to find that it's easier for me to break down the barriers of a theist, or at least a non-atheist of some description, by backing them up in something that they're saying oh excuse me um <laughs> the beer's yeah. going right through me <laughs> uh -huh. um but like having the conversation and then they suddenly realize 
oh, you're not one of those bullying atheists. You're not trying to ridicule me. You're interested in a conversation. You actually understand the burden of proof or epistemic justification. Fair enough, we disagree about our belief in God, but let's have a conversation about the things that we do agree on. Um, and then at some point in the future, maybe we will have a discussion about deities and maybe they will listen to my thoughts. Maybe I'll listen to their thoughts. But the fact of the matter is I've actually had a reasonable discourse with them. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's because you're stepping outside of your in-group to say, well, look, hang on a second. Um, you know, just because he's in your out group doesn't mean that he's worthy of mockery. Will, in some sense, get them to think, okay, well, this guy isn't just, you know, in group out grouping. Mm. He's looking to step outside that. And that will create a sort of bare respect. And I mean, there are plenty of theists looking for decent discussions. Think of somebody like Max Mills, for example. Ah, uh, he's great. He's one of my favorite theists to uh, chat to as well. Um, yeah. I I, I loved his comment, and, and Chris brought, brought this up the other day um, when we did our, our second recording of the ontology video, which unfortunately failed again, <laughs> and where, where Max actually said, I never actually have to make a claim about my belief in God because the average internet atheist jumps on and making so many claims before they even understand what I what my particular beliefs are that the burden of proof is completely on them. Yeah. Uh, it's true. But he's, he's a very bright guy. And I, to be honest, I'd love, I love to talk to theists like him more than I do the average internet atheist. Same. I mean, I'd, I'd rather talk to Max and somebody like I said, Brook and Kate or Darth yeah. Dawkins, you know, um, I kind of lump lots of the average internet atheists in with those Psy 10 sort of people where it's just not conversations that I enjoy having. It's a heuristic monological form of dialogue, isn't it? It's yeah. <laughs> They're just trying to teach you in generally an overly aggressive way um, where they're being incredibly snobby and snooty rather than actually, oh, you know what, let's have a discussion and try and find some truth in what we believe. Yeah. And they, it's, that's just not my type of conversation, to be honest. Um, okay, so carrying on. This is something we, that we should use to our advantage. Uh, we should be using to our advantage. By creating and reinforcing slogans such as ridiculous beliefs deserve ridicule, we immediately alienate those we should be having reasonable discourse with. We earn no respect from those we should be seeking to gain the respect of when we lead with the idea that we will ridicule what they believe, especially when we factor in some of the stereotypes and ideas that many believers already hold of the atheist. Again, that's that's another thing, isn't it? Like so many um, believers have this idea that we are evil um, and if we are overly aggressive and you know, demonstrate bullying behaviors, all it does is back up that stereotype. Exactly. And it, it's, and then think of it sort of like in a, an induction kind of way. Um, I know it's not reasonable to believe that the next instance of some occurrence will turn out exactly the same. Um, but let's face it, we all do make that kind of inference. The sun has risen for the last 365 days, so we assume that it's going to rise for the day after. Even though we might not have good reason to assume that, we do assume that. Yep. <laughs> and so, you know, why do we expect the theists to be any different, especially if we're already going in there with the mindset that they're going to be unreasonable? Well, if we're going to assume that they're going to believe the most unreasonable thing, then feeding into that will just sort of circle it. And this is basically what I bring up next. 
When we enter into a conversation with many believers, the non-believer is already confronted by certain prejudices and stereotypes. Oh, I'm sorry. Ideas such as the angry atheist, or the atheists are arrogant, or they are atheists simply because we do not want to behave, and much more. You know, that's the usual... You just want to sin. You're you just an atheist because you want to sin. Yeah, I've heard that one so many times. Those those are ones that I find generally turn me off the conversation when I hear phrases like that. In the same way that there are certain phrases that I hear from atheists as well that generally turn me off to the conversation. Um, I find the atheistic ones generally easier to address, but equally met with equal oh, you're just a theist troll, (laughs) or something like that. Yeah, similar levels of dogmatism, just about different ideas. Yep. Um, Many atheists will have come across this in some form at some point in their lives, especially if they are active in discussion and debate. We are also seen as irrational by many believers, as they believe that the rational conclusion is that God exists, And to believe otherwise is irrational. The Bible claims that those who do not believe in God are fools. And the Quran promotes the idea that we are less than cattle. Cite sources. I obviously forgot to fill in the sources too. (laughs) It's only five years old. It's all right. You can get to it. You can get to it. I can get around to it. Yeah, Yeah, I'm a busy guy. When a guy tells you he's going to get to it, you know, he'll get to it. (laughs) <laughs> doesn't matter no how many years it's him. been <laughs> yeah i don't need to bug him every six months to get it done <laughs> okay yeah it shows you yeah, i was i think i was in my second year undergrad when i wrote this um this means that even before entering into a conversation with many believers they have a particular image of us an image designed to impact the amount of respect that the believer has on first contact. In order to overcome this, we must show that these stereotypes do not hold weight, and that what they believe, and what they have been taught to believe, is a falsehood, that we are not angry and arrogant and foolish and immoral and less than animals, that we are indeed reasonable and rational people, and we are good people. I mean, that's basically what I was saying earlier about how when I have a conversation with a theist and they realized I'm not the typical um, Internet atheist, they suddenly open up and relax and they're just like, OK, let's have a conversation rather than be in that fight mode that, that we're at. The, the The funny thing is, though, I find it a lot harder to get a fellow atheist to relax in the same way. Um I I because there is so much charge and there is they're so used to fighting the theist that when you say something that sounds similar to something a theist might say for example that morality is not wholly subjective that value is not wholly subjective um all of a sudden they they assume that you are a theist troll and they're instantly against you because they think that you're a theist yeah and the, the other thing as well is um, if they have this impression of you before they've met you and that you're going to be all these things, when you come in hot and prove all these things, then you prove that all their other beliefs are justified. Well, the Bible got this right. What else has it got right? Whereas if you come in and you kind of knock that stereotype down, then they're going to say, well... I've been taught this my whole life, and that was completely wrong. So it can open up a door to doubt about other things. Yeah. Uh, I'm saving most of the comments for the end, but Leon's put one in there, and seeing as we're in between sections, I'm going to address it. Uh, He says, I don't really... um, uh, sorry, I really don't understand to this day why people who are atheists have such an issue with philosophical atheism. Uh, the easy answer is ego, but even then it makes little sense to me. I even had this the other day um, when I was I was having a, a conversation. I think it was... Um, I think it was on Twitter and someone turned... Ah, yes, it was the meme I posted about 
trying to bring reason to debate and you had the the philosophical atheist pushing the truck and the new atheists at the top not doing actually anything but thinking they're doing something and the 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 response i got was something like um they find uh philosophical atheists it wasn't arrogant but it was it was one of those sort of things um and my response to them is like uh oh yeah and you know scientific evolution equally the same it's just a changing kind right and they're like what do you mean <laughs> it's like yeah exactly <laughs> there's uh yeah that respect for science and and not for for the philosophy and uh yeah <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and it does it makes them lean one way or the other just based on that respect yeah definitely and because there's a lot of disrespect for philosophy not only from within the sort of new atheist community but from within some of the respected elders i guess we could call them um because they put philosophy down, those underneath them just kind of parrot it. Well, philosophy is useless, isn't it? It's all science, isn't it? Yeah. I'm just having a quick look through my Twitter feed to find, uh, see if I can actually find that exact response that happened. But uh, here we go. There's the meme that I posted. Let's see if I can find the conversation. Um, obviously, I'm not going to name names because I'm really not out for naming and shaming. Um, I'd rather address certain arguments that people make and turn around and, uh, you know, hopefully change your mind without make, ridiculing the person. Because as we've said, if I ridicule the person, it's going to make, um, make, it's going to turn them against me. So yeah, I turned, so this particular person said oh man i hate philosophical atheism it's so pretentious and i said yeah and scientific evolution too we all know it's just a changing kind right <laughs> and, yeah. and that, that they like questioned it i was like yeah i'm just poking fun and i was just poking fun but i was also making a point at that point in time um <laughs> you're just like Ugh. oh hey manny nice to see you in the chat um we're most of the way through the article and we will be addressing all the comments in just a moment. So uh, if you've got any questions about um, changing a mind, um, it's cool. As soon as we get to the end of the article, I'm going to uh, put things in to be right back for just a, a minute or two and then we'll address everybody's questions. So if anybody's got any questions, get them into the chat. Um, Alan, um, I will read out your incredibly long comment as well um, at the end of the article. Yeah, I mean, we are almost done. It's not my usual standard of dissertation article <laughs> level. Type. Yeah, it's, As you it's... can see, conclusion is right there on the screen. <laughs> um, okay, and uh, I then go on to sort of quote something that you'll all hear from a lot of atheists. I will never respect religion. There will be those who will reply that they will never respect religion or religious beliefs or believers. However, this is not the point being made here. The point is not that we must respect these things, but instead that one of the key conditions to getting someone to listen to you is that they must respect you enough to actually listen to what is being said. If they do not respect a person enough to listen to them, then there is little chance that person will have the opportunity to get them to question their beliefs or listen to their criticisms of their belief or to listen to reasons why they do not hold the same belief. Therefore, if the goal is these things, then the approach used must be considered. Sorry, batteries have run out on my mouse, damn it. <laughs> Always a technical glitch. Yeah, but as saying that, we actually haven't had you freeze at all for tonight. No, it's been going pretty well. What's going on? I'm worried. <laughs> Things have actually gone report. well. If it, in fact, the only fuck up was me having your mic muted at the the beginning of the stream. So, wow. <laughs> yes, you're right, Leon. We shouldn't jinx it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so, and in conclusion, this is not to say that all believers are approachable. 
or will listen or will ever respect anyone that does not believe the same thing as they do. I mean, theoretically, there's atheists that are similar to this as well. No, not just theoretically. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but the article is uh, is focusing on discussion with believers, so I didn't really go into that. Uh, mm -hmm. But these people clearly exist, and the atheist active in discussion and debate will have come across these people on a regular basis. These people may or not be unreachable. However, it should be considered that even the most ardent of believers in particular ideologies have changed their mind when they have come across people who had certain extant qualities that made them consider their beliefs. I mean, a lot of the atheists who go on, on about ridiculing believers were once believers, and it wasn't ridicule that changed their mind. It was usually listening to people that they respected, listening to the science or listening to counter-apologetics. So I don't know why they jump into this. Well, it's all about ridiculing them, isn't it? And I suppose it's a self-loathing thing projected onto somebody else. Yeah, I mean, there are, there are many parts to it that I can think about. I mean, if you have been so wrapped up in something that you suddenly realize is irrational, you're suddenly like, oh, my God, I was so stupid. Why is everyone else so stupid still? I finally worked it out. Why can't they work it out? Um, there's also asserting, asserting a bit of dominance in your new tribe, trying to maintain sort of, you know, we're all here to together. Um, I think there's also people where they, they do look up to people such as Hitchens and Dillahunty and Ra who do have that sort of rah sort of take on how they deal with people and they almost go, yeah, I'm going to be like that because that's what a good atheist does. And you know, no, <laughs> that's yeah. not what a good atheist does. But, you know, carry on. Um I think there's so many different factors that encourage this sort of behavior. And, and, you know, there are quotes from the king atheist like ridiculous beliefs deserve ridicule. And I mean, definitionally, yeah, something ridiculous is something de deserving of ridicule. But I think it's a bit different with what you are trying to achieve. Um, and who who is to judge what actually is ridiculous enough to deserve ridicule. What are you comparing that against? If it's something that is obviously illogical, like making a claim that you can have water that isn't H2O, well, yeah. Or that you can have a square circle. Okay, yeah. Those things are obviously ridiculous. Um, even then maybe we shouldn't ridicule the person. We should try and help them understand why it is ridiculous. But when it's something like a deity, okay, yeah, we might perceive it as ridiculous, but only against our standard and against their standard, they will see us as ridiculous. And when you've got no actual objective standard, like something that, that is completely illogical to compare it against is it something that we can definitely say is ridiculous exactly and if your first jump is to ridicule because somebody believes something different or they said something that you think is a bit dumb that's sort of like bringing a gun to a baby shower <laughs> shooting the first person that says something that you don't like at the baby shower that it just or, or even more shooting the person that says something that you do like <laughs> yeah you know it, it just seems like an overreaction especially if your intent is to convince them not to believe in god or to convince them to adopt a different epistemological approach. I mean, how does give me your lunch money change anybody's minds? Yeah, no, I'm with you there. Um, okay, so only two paragraphs to go. 
However, to reproach all believers as if they hold this mindset would be an error in judgment. For there are those who are willing to have polite discussions. There are also those that criticize others for similar reasons the atheist does, such as the exclusion and harassment of the LGBTQ plus community and the like. Just as the atheist community is diverse and is made up of many different ideas and beliefs, so too is the theist community. Some are not of the Abrahamic faith. These things should all be considered in our approach to discussion and debate and criticism. Just as we atheists are unfairly lumped together or faulty conclusions are made based on faulty premises, we must also not make the same mistake of theists. I mean, think of somebody like Randolph Rouser. He, critis- he has internal criticisms for Christianity and other Christians. And then you have other Christians who, oh, who's that chubby guy with the guns and he was at the Capitol thing and he's really loud. Josh something. <laughs> I can't remember his name. But he's, the, he's one of those idiot Florida style preachers who's just yelling down a camera. Um, he was one of the ones that complained about Starbucks not having proper Christmas cups. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if you treat Randolph Rouser the same as you treat some kind of really nasty, anti-gay um, preacher, you're not really helping the case any because they are very different kind of people. And supporting Randolph Rouser is sort of supporting your own arguments to some extent. And he is more likely to convince other Christians that maybe the Bible shouldn't be interpreted this way than somebody like Aaron Ra is going to. Um, So if our goal is to get people to consider their beliefs carefully, or to understand our criticisms of their beliefs, or to listen to our questions, then our approach needs to be considered by each and every one of us. Our goals, too, need to be considered. And if our goal is the things that are mentioned here, then one of the main factors in even getting close to them is that we must have a minimum amount of respect from those we are in discussion with, enough respect to actually get them to listen to us. Okay, and that's the end. Yeah, no, I'm I'm definitely um, in agreement with that. I, I mean, I think um, I, as I mentioned, the, the, this article was something that started to change my my mind on you. I mean, I I didn't even know you when I first read your th- this article, but it made me go, maybe he's someone I should know. I think Alan originally brought you into Answers in Reason. We'd probably never had a conversation um, outside me, maybe posting something dumb on debate faith i don't know if you remember <laughs> those days um but um i don't really remember them <laughs> i'm just fairly certain i posted something dumb <laughs> everybody does <laughs> i do <laughs> i but... just can make my dumb sound a bit smarter using big words <laughs> um but even that i think that there is especially in the atheist community there is definitely this uh, attitude that we can't say something dumb um there are so many that are, are so tied up in the the ego of being a super smart rational atheist that you know they won't question this they might have a particular goal they might not be aware of what their goal really is and not be performing the way they should do to get there but they will be certain that they're right no matter what because they are an atheist and atheist means you're a super smart rational person